Welcome to the Talk to Hear You Community Engagement Meeting, promoting underage drinking prevention with school-based partners. My name is Josh Ferrari, and I'll be your moderator for today's call. I handle communications and outreach for the campaign. Before we jump in, I'll just walk us through the yeah. agenda for the day. I got you. Let me do it um, advance the next slide there. Hold on, let me sync it. Now you can do it. All right. I don't know if um, it looks like we're having some. Hold on. There we go. All right. There's the agenda slide. So before we jump in, we'll just walk through the agenda for the day. Um, so we'll begin with introductions and a brief welcome from the SAMHSA officer in charge of Talk the Hear You campaign. Then you'll hear from two of our partners on the call, and they'll talk, how, talk about how they've used the campaign with school-based partners in their regions. Um, we'll do a brief Q&A period after each of their presentations. And then we'll go through sort of what's on the horizon with the campaign as far as school-based products. And um, we'll talk through some of the resources that we'll be sharing with you after today's webinar. Um, we'll finally end with closing remarks um, from SAMHSA as well. So before we pass it off to um, the officer, uh, SAMHSA officer responsible for the campaign, we'll just go ahead and do a poll on the screen. So in just a moment, you'll see it pop up. So what's the best time of year to implement substance use prevention programs? Is it fall, winter, spring, summer, or all year? Looks like we're getting some results here. Give it a few more seconds. Great. So it looks like uh, about 20% of you said fall is the best time of year for substance use prevention programs. Um, about 4% said spring. Another 4% said summer. Um, the majority of you, about 70%, said uh, all year would be the best time for substance use prevention programs. So that's helpful insight for us. Um, and you'll see throughout these presentations, our partners um, share some best practices that could be used throughout the year for you. So now I'll pass it off to Robert Vincent, the SAMHSA officer um, responsible for the Talk to Hear You campaign. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, let me, first of all, just thank everybody for taking time out from your busy days, um, especially as um, everybody has shared that a, a good time to implement prevention programs is all year, which I couldn't agree with more. <laughs> so. Um, with, with that, you know, we're going to hear from um, uh, our two partners here today, two of our school-based partners, Frisco and Knox County, and, and I just want to thank both of them for stepping up and being willing to share. The reason that we do these community engagements is largely oriented around how we interact with you and have conversation around the implementation of the program, but more importantly, that you get a chance to interact with each other and have conversations and learn from each other on best practices, challenges, questions you may have with certain um, groups that have implemented in different ways. And I would just thank Josh in particular today um, for his um, efforts here, because uh, the entire team has worked very hard to identify people and bring people in into all of that. So with that, let me introduce the team. Um, as Josh uh, stated, I am your federal officer responsible, but just call me Rob, please. Um, and my colleague, Nell Nadal, who is um, my, I often refer to her as my dancing partner. But we really have an award-winning team here. The entire team, and unfortunately, we didn't do a pan shot so you could see everybody else in the room. But Elaine Robar, our project director, is nothing less than amazing and who has um, worked very hard to get us the right kinds of people um, and manage the, the team very well, as well as her deputy, Emily Springer, um, who is um, – um, various student communications and helped us. And of course, Josh Ferrari, who you know um, as our community engagement person, and then Damaris Lopez, who works uh, a combination of our, on our metrics, evaluation, and other parts of the communications team. So with that, I'd also just want to take a minute to remind everybody why we do talk to hear you. What's the, what's the whole point of all of this? And sometimes in all of our busyness around identifying uh, specific partners or communications development or PSA 
conversation. Sometimes we just have to step back. So I'd like to just take a minute to remind you of kind of what the campaign goals are. Talk to you here, you fundamentally is about creating that parent conversation. Um, our work collectively is to how it is that we increase the awareness and understanding among parents around the prevalence of underage drinking. Underage drinking still represents the, the, the substance of choice by young people under the age of 21. Um, and in today's conversation, you might easily assume that everybody's doing an opioid or heroin or some version of that, and, and that simply is not true. Um, underage drinking still is uh, quite prevalent in all of that. Um, secondly, we're hoping to always increase knowledge, skills, and self-efficacy among the parents. Our chief job is how do we help them feel comfortable and competent to have these kinds of conversations um, and feel like they have all the information, get a chance to see it be modeled, um, work with um, a variety of community coalitions and other people to assist them. And of course, our work on the PSA and the campaign is around just trying to identify those things that would help showcase that good work and create uh, materials that would support it. Lastly, the real action here is that we want parents to take an action. We want them to have that conversation, thus talk, they hear you. So with that, I just wanted to take an opportunity to um, remind everybody why we're collectively gathered here um, and thank our two partners. Um, again, I could not thank them enough for this. And I think um, don't be shy. Ask all the questions you want. It's very important that, that you have a full engagement. And if we can't get to all of your questions today, we will certainly work as a team to get to them a little bit later. So with that, I'll turn it over to Josh. Great. Thanks, Rob. And so um, as moderator, I'll just go ahead and introduce our next speaker. Uh, William Solari is the Student Assistance Coordinator with Frisco Independent School District in Frisco, Texas. And so now um, the floor is yours, William. Thanks, Josh. And hi to everybody. Um, as Josh said, my name is William Solari, and I'm a Student Assistance Coordinator for Frisco ISD. Um, basically, in a lot of different um, places, that's just called a crisis counselor. I also am a board member of the Substance Use Prevention Coalition of Collin County, and I also do some private practice work. But as um, you all know, we're here to talk about Talk They Hear You, but before, we, um, before I get into the two campaigns that uh, we've used here at Frisco ISD, I just want to give you some background. Uh, into our school district and why we ended up choosing the Talk They Hear You uh, campaign. So we are now the fastest growing city in uh, the United States. In the last five years, we have opened uh, four new high schools, four new middle schools, and nine new elementary schools. And just to give you an idea of kind of that in perspective, um, each of our high schools has 2,200 students, or approximately somewhere between 21 and 2,200. So that kind of gives you an idea of the fast-paced growth that we've been experiencing. So why did we choose Talk They Hear You? Um, there's, we were looking for a way to address with our parents the underage drinking prevention issue, and we really didn't want to recreate the wheel. So when we started to research different programs, different um, ideas that were out there, when we found Talk They Hear You, there was a couple things that really attracted us to um, the program. The first thing was that it's you know sponsored by SAMHSA. And that immediately we knew it would give credibility to our parents when we were talking to them with these talking points. Um, it also was very effective in getting our school board and our school top administration uh, on board with the program as well. They're always looking for, you know, credible uh, resources to give to our parents and to our community. So those two things really helped us in selling the program to our uh, school board and getting their backing behind it. Now I'm going to kind of switch gears and talk about the two different sort of campaigns that we had. We, uh, the first one was we rolled it out last spring, and it was a group of um, or a set of eight different parent presentations. 
And we chose to target our fifth grade and eighth grade parents in the spring because their children were going to be coming up to a transition year of either going into middle school or going into high school. So we really felt like this was an important time to, um, you know, try to get those parents in. So what we did was we divided our district into four different quadrants and presented at one elementary school in each quadrant and one middle school in each quadrant. And so it was a total of eight meetings. They were open to anybody within the school district, so it's not, it wasn't like you were restricted to go to only the meeting in your quadrant, but it just made it more convenient for our parents. Um, and we also held the meetings at different times during the day, somewhere in the morning, somewhere in the evening, um, and we tried to keep it to about 30 minutes um, and then have question and answer um, afterwards. So the content of the presentation uh, really was based upon the different tools that the Talk They Hear You campaign has. Uh, so we started off with some statistics uh, from our own safe school survey. Um, we do a survey every year within our school district of our 8th and 11th graders. And one of the um, statistics we shared with the parents from that survey was that 68% of our 11th graders said that one of the reasons that they did not engage in underage drinking or alcohol use was their parents' disapproval. So right away we were kind of given the credibility that yes, the students do listen to their parents and that these conversations can be incredibly valuable in deterring your child from um, engaging in underage or illegal underage drinking. So after that we uh, showed the discussion starter video and talked about just the different ways to have these conversations and how important it is to have it multiple times. You know, we said this is a marathon, it's not a sprint, it's not a one-time discussion to be having with your um, children. But after that we showed the um, Mom's Thoughts PSA, the 62nd one. Uh, we thought that really did a good job of a, not only addressing that the importance of this conversation to have with females as well as males, but uh, it just we just thought it was a great example of the types of conversations that parents should be having and the different opportunities that parents have to have these conversations with their children. And then at the end of the presentation, we uh, had everybody download the app and showed the video that explains the app and um, kind of touches upon the different points of it being an excellent resource and, uh, and then we had question and answer. As I stated before, we tried to keep it to about 30 minutes, the presentation, uh, and we were pretty successful in doing that. I think one of them ran a little bit over, but uh, we, did, we wanted to be cognizant of our parents' time. The second campaign that we have run within the school district uh, is utilizing the Talk They Hear You PSAs. We show them before different district events such as fine arts performances, school board meetings, uh, we've shown them at some athletic events, some PTA meetings, just really anywhere that we have the technology and the ability to um, show the PSAs, we encourage uh, the use of the PSAs before all district events. And so this has been um, real good in building just a consistent message within our community. We also partnered with our local movie theater here and they, in the spring of 2017, they showed the PSAs, the 32nd spot, uh, prior to, you know, the movie trailers and when they were showing some other advertisements and some other PSAs. So that was another way we were able to sort of broaden our scope of reaching the community, not only to the parents and students, but also all members of the community. 
So what were the key takeaways we got from our two different campaigns that we've done? Really, the, I, without a doubt, the biggest response we got was, I didn't know that the students actually cared and listened to what I said as a parent in regards to alcohol use. They just, you know, a lot of the parents just really thought that there was no point in having the conversation, that their children were going to do whatever they wanted to do, and they didn't understand the effect and the importance of their parent, um, of the parent-child conversation about underage drinking occurring. Um, and then we also discussed how, or one of the takeaways we got was how many of the parents really felt awkward about having these conversations, and, and we got some good feedback on how the app was able to help with this, and they were very thankful for the um, information. Um, let's see. And then the other thing that we got was we did get some good feedback from the movie theater and just the different um, events and the consistent message. And now we're kind of looking to include some print media in future programs, some of the um, print uh, materials and resources that talk they hear, hear you have. We're hopefully going to roll them out in some of our fine arts programs and in different newsletters that the district has. Um, so that's kind of where we're hoping to go forward. All right, so that's pretty much what I have. Great, thanks William. Um, so now we'll do uh, a Q&A session. We'll pause here for Q&A with William. So if anyone has any questions, you can go ahead and um, add them to the Q&A box on the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. You can also unmute your microphone by dialing pound six on your telephone keypad to verbally ask a question. Um, we do have a couple questions already, so I'll go ahead and read those aloud. Um, so the first one is from Ellen, and she asked, William, did you provide any kind of incentive um, to get parents to these events? No, we did not. We just opened it up to all of our um, parents within our school district. So, you know, one of the things, one of the challenges we've definitely had is getting parents out to our um, substance use prevention programs, parent presentations. So even though it seems like the ones who show up are the ones who are probably doing a good job and it's frustrating because sometimes you feel like the ones who probably need the information most aren't there, um, our feeling is, you know, kind of it's a two-way street, one being that, you know, speaking to anybody is better than speaking to nobody and hopefully they're going to tell their friends and they'll start to see the consistent message. Um, that along with the fact that, um, you know, in any type of prevention, anything is better than nothing. So um, that's kind of what, the way we approached it, but we did not have any um, incentives. Great, thank you. Um, and the next one here is from Melissa, and she asked, um, do the fifth and eighth grade parents um, target a presentation? Do the targeted presentations for the fifth and eighth grade parents differ at all? Do you use the same video, or how do you um, differentiate those presentations? We use the same exact presentation for both. Um, there were some children at the events. We tried to market it really as just a parent presentation, but we use the same exact. Um, resources and materials for both. Great. Thank you. And then a couple more questions here, um, a few specific to the movie theater um, partnerships that you talked about. So did the movie theaters charge you at all to, to play those PSAs? And um, if so, how did you budget for that? And I guess the broader question here is, um, you know, how did you reach out to those movie theaters and establish that partnership? Sort of what's the first contact? Um, really, the first contact was just going to the movie theater and asking to speak with the manager. Um, one of the movie theaters that we were in were a national chain that actually is headquartered pretty close to Frisco. So I ended up, after um, 
meeting with the manager, ended up going and meeting with somebody at their corporate headquarters. Um, but they did not charge us. They were fairly open to, you know, using our um, or using the SAMHSA's PSAs. There was a little bit of, um, you know, technical struggles trying to get it um, at first, but once we got that figured out with the movie theater, it really was just they they ran it for a 60-day uh, time frame for us. Great, thanks, William. Um, and we just we also did want to point out we have a couple different formats of the video PSAs, um, so you can adapt them for your own use. We have. Um, primarily 30-second and 60-second options available, but we also have 15-second PSAs, which are a little bit shorter, um, you know, probably um, easier to get in with movie theaters. As well as the high res, because that's probably what the theaters are looking for, is more of a high res kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so we have a web-based files, but we also have broadcast quality files that you would work with your local stations to use, or again, those movie theaters would probably be of interest. And so if you'd like to receive those files, you can email us um, at underage.drinking at samhsa.gov um, for more information. Um, and then a few more questions here, William. Uh, we were getting a lot of questions about school board involvement and sort of how you worked with getting approvals for that. Um, you know, who did you first reach out to um, to talk about the campaign? Um, and did you get any pushback for that? Yeah. Um, since I worked for the school district, I just reached out to the director of counseling, um, who's actually my boss, and that's how the program got off the ground. I think that's probably the best, um, the best person, target person to start with is either the head of the guidance and counseling for the school district or the d director of counseling services, and then um, really let them sort of you know, push the program up. Our school board really did not give any pushback, um, like I said, because of the credibility of SAMHSA. You know, our school board is always looking for evidence-based programs and things like that, that they know that where, they're, um, where the school district is presenting a high-quality product to our parents and our community. Um, one thing, I know there's a lot of questions there about turnout. Just to say real quick, you know, the turnout was, was decent. It's never as high as we think it should be, especially in a school district of 60,000 students. Um, but I think one thing we've done with the PSAs at the event is we've kind of taken the marketing um, strategy of, okay, well, let's take our message to where we know the parents are either at athletic events, fine arts performances, and things like that. So I think you have to get a little creative on that part of it, but, um, you know, there's still value in doing the parent presentations as well, without a doubt. Great. Thanks, William. I mean, we're, we're getting a few more questions about um, the PSAs and movie theaters. Um, so people are asking, you know, uh, how you, you know, are you able to put your logos on the PSAs, which is some, something we can talk to right now. Um, you know, uh, what movie theaters did you work with? I knew you kind of addressed that a little bit. Um, so if you're looking to customize the PSAs for movie theaters, we do have a brand guide on the Talk to Hear You website, it's underagedrinking.samsa.gov, which is at the bottom of your PowerPoint right there. And so um, we do have a, a bundle of sort of Branding resources available to our partners, and the brand guide would probably be the first one you'd want to check out. It just talks through a little bit about, you know, um, the editorial guidelines, as well as how you can use your own organization's logos or contact information to include on um, different PSAs or other campaign products. So we'll be sure to send that out in our follow-up email, um, but that's something you might be interested in checking out for some of the people on the call who asked about that. Um, and then another question came through about the possibility of um, the expansion of the campaign to include other substances. And that's something we're actually working on right now. And Rob, I don't know if you sure. want to speak to that a little bit. Sure. So um, this year, um, still working its way through final clearance, but we'll be coming to you with some new print materials um, in short order. You may have noticed we've produced three new PSAs this year. 
um, that um, are out there, and we have broadened those to include other substances, and particularly prescription drugs and marijuana um, has been the focus um, on both of those, as well as including the military um, um, uh, folks as well. Uh, the print materials are coming out. It will be a series of print materials that will assist in, in the similar same um, prescription drugs, opioids, marijuana, um, as well as underage drinking. We always keep all, all of that together because usually, I, I hate to say it, um, if they've started one substance, they, there tends to be not just a single substance oftentimes used. But what people aren't always aware of is sort of the synergistic properties, some of those kinds of things. So those are soon to come to you. They'll be up on the website um, not too far down the road once we receive the final clearance um, for that. Um, the other thing that I would offer up um, is that we are always interested in your suggestions. So that if, if there uh, is another substance that is percolating, uh, we are happy to take that under advisement. I uh, won't say that we can make a commitment to it. Um, uh, and that it would need to ha have national perspective, but that's not to say that we wouldn't develop something along those lines. So if you are happy thoughts that way, please submit. We're happy to entertain it and take it up as we start our development process and think about how it fits into the larger campaign. And if we can do it, we can put it in our queue for development. Great. Thanks, Rob. Um, and then, William, we do have um, just one more question for you here, and then we'll move on to our next presenter. So. A few people are asking, what kind of turnout did you have for these events? So maybe you could speak to that a little bit. Sure. We had, um, I would say we probably averaged about 60 to 70 people at the events. Um, one of them, the, um, I think it was the second, yeah, the second eighth grade presentation, we did not have a good turnout just due to um, it just didn't seem to get advertised like it was supposed to. So, um, you know, I think it's important to start advertising probably 30 days out from when you're actually going to have the event. And, um, you know, we had it on the school newsletters that get sent out every week, um, and that was probably the biggest um, communication tool we had to the parents. So, but I would say we averaged probably somewhere between 50 and 70 people at each one. That's great. Thanks, William. Um, sure. So before I move on, I did just want to share that we do have some other questions in the queue. Um, and with our time restrictions, we won't be able to answer them aloud, but we will follow up with those people um, individually after the webinar. Um, so we'll make sure every question gets answered. If you do have any other questions, always feel free to email us at underage.drinking at samhsa.gov. Um, and this email address will be on the last slide of our presentation as well. Um, so again, that's underage.drinking at samhsa.gov. Um, so thanks, William, again. Now we'll go on to our next presentation, um, which is with Ashley Phillips. She's the program coordinator at Knox County Health Department. And she'll um, go ahead and give her presentation. Thanks, Ashley. All right, hello everyone. Um, as Josh mentioned, my name is Ashley Phillips and I am the program coordinator at the Knox County Health Department, but also the coordinator for our Substance Misuse Prevention Coalition here in Knox County, Ohio. And that stands for um, the Knox Substance Abuse Action Team or commonly referred to as KSAT. And so what I'm going through today and what I'll talk about today is coming more from a coalition's perspective of how we can better partner and how we've been successful partnering with our schools um, and school districts across Knox County. So Knox County is located um, right in the smack dab middle of Ohio. One of our towns is actually considered the uh, geographically the heart of Ohio. And the picture that you see on your screen is a, a very um, accurate picture of Knox County. We are very rural. Um, uh, there's approximately 45 miles from one end of the county to the other. Takes you though about 60 to 65 minutes because of the road conditions and the hills that you're traveling on. And a fun fact, 58% of our land in Knox County is actually farmland. Um, so kind of puts it into perspective with, with what we're looking at and the environment that we are in. Um, overall, Knox County, we average about 60,810 residents as of 2015. 
Um, we have five public school districts with one um, private school district, and I'll talk about how um, we tailor our messages a little bit differently with our private school districts as well as our public school districts. Um, we have one classified city, six villages, and 22 townships. So uh, again, very rural. Um, our, you know, we have one Walmart, and that's about it in our county. Um, but one thing that is a little unique for being so rural and being so um, in, in Ohio, I guess, is we have three colleges. Um, and so I'll also talk about how we're partnering with um, our colleges, too, later on. So talk, they hear you. Um, to give you a little background, in Knox County, according to our PRIDE survey from 2017, November of 2017, um, we administer the PRIDE survey in all school districts, including the private school district, and with all students in grades 6th, 8th, 10th, and 12th grade. And we've been doing this since 2011, so we're able to have a clear picture of what our numbers are looking like um, from then and, and now. Um, but Underage drinking, tobacco use, and marijuana use are our three primary substances that are um, reported using. So just about 34% of 12th graders report that they use alcohol regularly, and we define regularly as monthly use. Um, almost 20% of them use marijuana, and 15% of them use tobacco, again, um, regularly. The average age of onset for use in Knox County is 12 years old. And so when we do some of our presentations that I'll talk about, um, we're really trying to reach parents who have adolescents. Honestly, we want to reach anyone and everyone, but we're really trying to reach parents um, who have adolescents 12 and under because it's the primary prevention opportunity. So you'll see here, the parent, teacher, and student. Together it all connects. Um, the parent and teacher are honestly the main influences in a young person's life. And if you think about it, between a parent or a guardian figure and a teacher, that's who students and adolescents are spending most of their time with, whether it's at school or what they're taking part in after school. Um, on top of this, in 2015, uh, we were grateful to receive the Federal Drug Free Communities Grant. And so with that, we were just beginning our implementation and our work and honestly our presence um, throughout Knox County. Um, and since the Drug Free Communities Grant is solely focused on prevention, what better outreach to do than with our school systems who see the kids every single day um, and even interact with them in the summer based off of the programming that they have. Additionally, over one-fourth of students that report using actually say that they use right in their parents' home, and most of the time their parents even provide it. So talk, they hear you, honestly, just made the most sense. Um, one of the key things and one of the best things about talk, they hear you is everything's ready and it's at your fingertips. Um, they're all available. You can customize them um, if you follow the correct process. So we stick our logo on there just for branding and for recognition purposes across the county. Um, and the biggest thing that's been helpful, too, for us are the videos. So sometimes if you hand someone a card or you have a table tenant up, you know, it might catch their attention and it might get them thinking, but if they can actually see it in practice and see it in practice of which they can connect to, which is the biggest thing, um, the more likely they are to actually apply the messages um, and what we're trying to, to send them. So our campaign implementation. Um, initially, we started implementation of Talk They Hear You after SAMHSA's um, Prevention Day in February of 2017. Um, if you'll recall, if you were at the conference, they released their song, um, which you might have heard today. And I just, as of yesterday, I'm aware that there's a new song out there too. So um, we started in February of 2017. Um, all of our social media platforms and our website, we constantly are blasting the videos, the PSAs, anywhere from 15 seconds all the way to if we're trying to do a specific spotlight on something, we'll post the five-minute one. Um, and I'll talk about how, we're, how we specifically use that five-minute video um, in a little bit here. I mentioned how rural Knox County is, and so we're not an active transportation friendly community. Therefore, radio is still one of the biggest methods um, and modes of communication that is effective for our residents. 
So we, anytime we have um, community partnerships or even community events going on, we always tack um, usually the 15 second Talk They Hear You ad on with our paid advertisement too, um, which has been successful and it's been helpful for us too. Um, and then you'll see our newsletter. So we have, o we have over 1,500 um, parents and adults and, co and community members across Knox County subscribe to our bi-monthly newsletter. So we send it out on Tuesdays um, every other week. And we have a different topic of discussion each week, but at the bottom of the newsletter, we always feature um, a Talk They Hear You PSA and then the um, URL to access resources for them. And in the bottom right corner, you'll see the Hidden in Plain Sight logo. Um, and just a quick explanation in case you aren't aware of what Hidden in Plain Sight is. It's not what you would consider a primary prevention program, but it does, um, it does kind of allow you as a coalition to be out in your community um, and building awareness of. So what you do is you set up a mock teenager's bedroom, um, and you have different items all across the room some of which indicate risky behaviors, um, not only talking about substance use or misuse in this case too. However, how we incorporate most of our prevention work in the Hidden in Plain Sight program is what we start the first 30 minutes out doing. So as people are walking in the door, we have the Talk They Hear You song playing in the background. Um, and it kind of sometimes will catch their attention. Sometimes they think it's just background music. Um, but then we go into the data portion and the education portion of the training. And what we're focusing on there is what our students in Knox County report using, um, how accessible they feel substances are, where they get them, so on and so forth. But all throughout our presentation, we insert the Talk They Hear You videos. Um, and so we have parents and we have adults tell us all the time that, you know, when they first saw the first video, they thought, oh, that's really interesting. And the more that they saw the videos, the more they thought, oh, this, this is doable. I can start a conversation, especially when they haven't ever done so um, yet before anyways. So we have done Hidden in Plain Sight um, since two, for about two years now. Uh, we've attracted or we've reached 4,000 adults. Um, and we've done over 57 presentations. All of our six school districts in Knox County have hosted at least three presentations um, for their parents of students there, as well as we've done a staff training at four of the six school districts during their professional development days. So what are some best practices in Knox County that we've come across? Um, personalization. Especially when you are rural, um, chances are you, you know people that you run into. You can't go to the grocery store without knowing someone um, or seeing someone that you at least recognize. So build the bond. Um, whenever we started implementing the Talk They Hear You messages, we, we realized just how um, beneficial they could be in the school. And so we've tacked on something else with it, our build the bond. So, you know, it's starting that conversation, having that connection, um, and making, tying that relationship together. And also, when I say personalization, thinking of the audience that you're speaking to. And so when we're speaking to our school who has an average graduating class of 50 students, we're going to focus more on what type of messages, or maybe we'll focus a little more on the alcohol PSAs that are available because we know that's the primary substance used there. Um, to capitalize, expand on your current efforts. So no matter what you're doing um, throughout your community or with your coalition, tack on Talk They Hear You with everything that you're doing. Whether it's the business cards, the table tennis, that trainings, whatever it may be, there's always a place to implement the Talk They Hear You campaign. Um, and with that, you just have to make it repetitive. Um, so I mentioned we do the hidden and plain sight trainings with all of our schools. We also do um, any sort of substance abuse or prevention trainings with all of our schools right before um, they start school and with their school open houses. So what we do is in every classroom, uh, we have table tennis, um, which you'll see a picture of later on in my slide, of the Talk They Hear You messages. So there, again, they're seeing it multiple times. 
Um, and every person who walks in the door of the school is handed one of the Talk They Hear You business cards. And so, you know, even if it's just a business card, A, it's looked at as a freebie, which has, all, which has been beneficial for us. But B, it's something that it's small, so they can slip it in their pocket or slip it in their purse um, and take it with them, too. Um, it's not like a big piece of paper that they have to carry that chances are they'll fold up and, and toss away in the trash, too. Um, and always being able to address and, and provide those additional resources. And we found this when we're doing our staff trainings at schools. When we start to show one of the videos, they'll ask, well, what if we were in this scenario? How would that look like? Or what suggestions do you have? And sometimes we're able to use the other videos that SAMHSA and Talk They Hear You has provided for us. Other times we just have to think about, let's actually put this into practice and what do you think would work best for you? And so the videos provide um, really great talking points to get the conversation even as, as, as we're training and providing the education to our um, community members. Collaboration has been um, a key thing for us. So Knox County has over 12 um, different community fairs and festivals. So anytime we're out in the community, we take all of our Talk They Hear You um, resources with us. And actually what we started doing this past year is all of the vendor tables have partnered with us and we stick a table tenant on each of their um, vendor tables. So again, it's making it habitual, making it present all the time. It's probably not a surprise to many of you, um, involve your youth. So if you have youth, um, if you're at an athletic event, sometimes we'll have a, um, when, they're, when it's during halftime, if we have the video screen in one of our gymnasiums, we'll pop on a video. And you know, it's not necessarily that everyone stops what they're doing and looks to the video screen, but they hear that background noise too instead of the music playing. Um, and then you can have your youth walking throughout the stands handing out the cards um, and so on, just some examples like that. I mentioned our professional development and staff meetings. So we do those every year. Um, we tailor our program based off of what is most prevalent at that time. And so last spring, um, before our teachers started their spring semester, we did our trainings focusing on the vaping, um, specifically with the Juul, because that was such a hot topic at that point. But again, it's never forgetting that to always include your Talk They Hear You campaign. Um, and this, the song, it's, it's catchy. Um, and so it's just another thing that you can add on to what you're doing. That picture you see of the resource toolkit is what our coalition created um, last year. And so it's basically just a prevention resource for any community member. We've dispersed over 7,525 of those booklets throughout our community. And so when you think of us having 60,000 residents and we've had 7,000 out there, that's a pretty good ratio of what we would consider. Um, and every other page, we have the Talk They Hear You logo and at least a picture or a snippet of someone, um, one of the resources that Talk They Hear You provides. So those are just a few locations that, um, that the booklets are in. The biggest thing that I could recommend to anyone is the consistency part of it. And the thing that's nice about Talk They Hear You is it's consistent just in yourself. You don't have to, just in itself, you don't have to worry about trying to tailor a message or let's update this or that because it's already provided to you and everything is free. So how does it get better than that? Um, but the biggest thing too with that is whether it's your coalition or whether it's the staff at your school when you're having your parent-teacher nights, speak the same messages um, and do that consistently. Um, and again, just encouraging those to start the conversation. So two lessons learned to kind of wrap up here is budget additional funds to support your implementation. So although the resources are free, how can you further promote those? Um, social media and radio campaigns are the two most effective um, advertising means in Knox County. And so we pay for the Facebook boosting. We pay for those 30-second um, radio ads. Um, so how, do you, how can you make the most of what works in your community? and carry those business cards everywhere. Honestly, besides the videos, those business cards have been so effective for us um, because it's just a little freebie that we can give away, 
but it not only has a picture, but it ha the, the title of each business card doesn't say substance use or alcohol use, like the one in the top right. It says before she starts buying into peer pressure. So it's not always so focused on those substance use messages um, that a lot of times people like to quickly turn their head to. Um, it catches their attention because it's not saying that um, right out in front. So I think that's all I have, um, so thank you. Great, thanks Ashley. Um, and so now we have another five minutes here for Q&A. Um, I know some questions have already come in through the Q&A pod, but again, if you have a question, feel free to go ahead and type it below. Um, otherwise, you can unmute your microphone by dialing pound six on your telephone and it um, verbally asks your question. Um, we'll just run through some of them here. So. Um, the first one here is, have you had a booth at back to school nights, and if so, were those successful? So the first year in 2017 uh, for back to school, we had a booth at all of our school fairs um, and open house nights, and, but a lot of those fell on the same night. So it required a lot of planning um, and time commitment from our coalition members. But from that, though, we were able to determine what schools were the most effective use of our time, meaning how much, not only how many parents attended, but how many interactions we had with the attendees. And so what we did this past school year is we selected um, three out of the six school districts and we hosted a table there um, just based off of our previous year's experience and that seemed to work well for us. Um, the next one here is, uh, is the resource but the resource toolkit, is, is it also provided by SAMHSA? I believe you're referring to the credit card flash drives that, or the partner toolkits that we had mailed you, Ashley, a while back with those. Oh, okay. Yeah, so those, those are available. Um, what I did is I just emailed um, the talk they hear you, the underage drinking, um, to, to get those resources. And then another question was about, so I think that one might, might have actually been about the resource toolkit that your team had developed, actually. Apologies for the confusing confusion there. Oh, okay. um, But someone else asked yeah. if you'd be willing to share that coalition booklet. Um, Absolutely, yeah. Yep, if you would email me, um, you'll see my email right there. I can mail you copies as well as send you an electronic version, too. That's great. Um, and we'll ask. We'll, we'd love to see a copy of that too, Ashley. So, perfect. Uh, one thing that I did fail to mention too with that resource toolkit, part of the reason why we've been able to um, get so many of them out in the community is when we first started our staff training, um, we equipped every staff member in a school in Knox County with one of those booklets. And we could tell which um, teachers like took the time to read them because those teachers, we had about 25 of them um, request them each year for their, to give their parents to. So that's been successful in another way that we've been able to get the, the campaign out there. Oh, great. So um, yeah, we'd love to share that in the recap email as well. So we'll just get in, you know, get in contact with you to get that and we can share that if it's easier for everyone on the call to receive a copy that way. Okay. Um, another question here is, did you run the campaign all year or was it, a, was it during a targeted time period? Um, like, for example, in William's presentation, it was during the spring campaign. Um, did you do it all year or, or just a specific portion of the year? Um, when we're working with our schools, we do it in the months of um, late October, no, all throughout November, and then very early December. And then in the spring semester, we do it all throughout January, February, and the beginning of March. And we found that those are the least busiest times not only for parents, but for um, school administration and the educators themselves based off of the testing or what they have taking place in their classroom. So those are the times that we really try and um, connect with our schools and be present in the schools. And then in the summer is when all of our fairs and festivals throughout the county are, and I think we have about 15 of those. So that is where a lot of the messaging that we do um, during um, June through August takes place. Um, and another question here specific to the business cards that you're sharing. Um, I know that there's a campaign product that we've produced, but 
are you customizing them at all, or you know, adding your own contact information on the back of the card or anything like that? What we do is we have a little sticker of our logo and then our website that we just tack on um, the side of the business card, and then that way we're not um, covering up any of the information that's already pre-printed on there, but yet they have a local resource that they can contact whether they have a question or um, would like more of them. Um, another one here, how, um, how are things changed when you're interacting with private schools? Um, do you implement the campaign differently or are approvals different? Yeah, so first of all, the approval is different. Um, so our private school has about, our, our average school size um, is anywhere from 60 to 300. Our private school per class, um, our private school has an average of 15 students per grade. And what they actually require all of their parents to do is achieve volunteer hours or some sort of um, um, hours to, to have your students um, enroll in their, in their school. And so the trainings that we provide um, to that school are then counted towards the volunteer hours that they need. Um, so that was a win for us. And then the first thing that we had to do, though, prior to even being able to be in the school is we actually ask to um, sit down with the, the principal um, and the uh, religious leader within the school to have a conversation about um, you know, who we are and what we're doing too, just because um, they have a little different parameters that they're working with, and we hadn't really been able to connect with them um, in the beginning too. Ashley, um, and I know uh, we're coming up to the time period here where we've been getting a few questions about evaluation of the campaign, so we'll make sure we spend a little bit of time here at the end of the presentation to um, talk through that. I know we do some evaluation on the national level um, and, and on the local <laughs> level too, so um, we'll Go ahead, pass off to Rob, I guess. Yeah. So uh, a couple of things as it relates to um, uh, evaluation, and I saw a couple of other questions here as well around metrics and some of those kinds of things, which sort of prompted some discussion back here for us to see how we might assist you further. Um, Talk Day Hear You is go undergoing a national evaluation. We're still waiting for our OMB approval for the national survey. That will be coming sometime in the next, I don't know, this quarter, next three or four months at, at, at the latest, hopefully earlier than later. Um, that being said, we are continuously evaluating the campaign. In fact, this year we did a pilot study. We're just now getting the final results of that in. We had two schools that provided um, pilot sites for us where we tested that. Um, we will probably be looking for some more of that at some time in the future, depending on how things go. Um, but that being said, we're not ready to quite release those results. Um, those were targeted towards behavioral change. And, and as much as a media campaign can accommodate that, and that's, I always use that very cautionary statement because it's very hard to measure behavioral change of a media campaign. That being said, I'll let Elaine chime in here just for a few minutes, too, to talk a little more expansively about some of that. I'm going to okay. give you my chair. We're going to rotate. Yeah, I'm just going to give you my okay. chair. That way you're not having the... <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Um, hi, everyone. So, yeah, I think, Rob, you did a really good job sort of explaining the, the, the process and where we are in that process. So, um, you know, as Rob said, the national survey is going to start hopefully within the next several months or as soon as we get OMB approval. Um, we'll kick that off. And then with the, with the case study, we, um, that's really where we're looking at measuring some of that behavior change. Um, so that also, you know, as Rob said, we are getting the results in the reporting out. I think that what we'll do is once we're able to get that analyzed and get approval on that, what we'll do is probably uh, plan a, uh, one of our quarterly calls to be able to go through that and talk about the evaluation more in depth and perhaps have our uh, evaluation specialists join the call and really talk through the evaluation of the campaign um, and share some of our um, results and findings and talk about how we can help you guys do some evaluation on the local level. So I think that can be a future topic for one of our calls. Um, you know, otherwise, we're, you know, we're, we're in that process of evaluating. And we would really invite you to sit where you're at. <laughs> we would really just invite you um, as we go down that conversation. You know, this campaign is for you and about you. 
So our, our whole effort here really is, is how does this work for you? How do we evaluate it? And, and the reality is there is no national media campaign that is considered a best practice. There are best practices to implement a national media campaign, but there's actually not one that you would ever find on a list. And one of the things that we hope to change with this is that very idea that um, through all of the suggestions and the work that all of you contribute, um, the evaluation team and everybody that, um, I mean, literally there, there's hundreds and hundreds of people that have honestly developed this campaign. Um, so with all of that, our hope is, or at least my hope is, but I, I think it's shared collectively, is to continue this conversation. And at some point in time, we're hoping to work with local coalitions around evaluation, um, shape that, and also get it contributed to the larger. All of our findings are published um, in the report to Congress. Um, and uh, we can send that link out to you as well, if you like. It's chapter five of this um, current past year, but it'll be chapter four um, for 2018. So with that, let me turn it back over to Josh and we'll uh, move on to the next phase. Great, thanks Rob. Um, we just have a few minutes left on the call here. So I just wanted to go over quickly sort of what's on the horizon with the campaign. Um, I know Rob talked a little bit about the expansion earlier, but we um, sort of with the expansion to uh, alcohol and other substances, we've also adapted one of our existing educator um, resources. So we have an educator handout online already um, that we've adapted to include some other tips um, for educators to talk, sort of talk about the campaign, recognize the warning signs of substance use uh, maybe with their students, and uh, you know, also the ways that they can sort of implement the campaign within their school communities. You know, maybe that's speaking about it at a PTA meeting or maybe it's sending um, messages home with, with students uh, via email or via backpacking, so, you know, stuff like that. So once that's released, we'll be sure to follow up. You'll receive the existing resource with your um, email recap bundle as well. And so uh, the second part to this is, after today's webinar and the days following, we plan to share a recap email, which will include a bundle of social media posts, a newsletter blurb, and a blog template with spots for you know, local statistics or quotes from school leaders um, that may be of interest to any schools or community-based groups on the call today um, in conjunction with Red Ribbon Week, which is coming up in October. So you'll be receiving that from us. And then the last thing I just wanted to touch on here is that um, with the trademarking of the campaign. We do offer brand licenses for anyone looking to use the campaign. Again, um, the campaign is free and open to the public as is. Um, we just love to learn how you're using it to um, help us tailor the products going forward and sort of you know, learn um, your best practices, kind of like we've highlighted on today's call with our partners today. So with that, I'll turn it over to Rob just to give uh, closing remarks. Well, uh, once again, I, I could not possibly say thank you enough to all of the people that have contributed to Talk They Hear You, and, and it literally does number in the hundreds. Um, many, many coalitions across the United States have um, uh, weighed in, uh, continued to provide us feedback, served as focus groups. Um, our job collectively is to take the great ideas and try to create um, first-rate materials. So part of the trademarking, as Josh said earlier, is we're hoping to bring to you, sort of, if you will, the good housekeeping seal of media campaign that people can walk away and trust. And that is really built upon the, the collective here. So I would just offer up, continue to talk with us, provide us feedback. If you have thoughts, ideas, things that we've done well, things that we've not done well, we want to hear from you. And I could not thank uh, our presenters enough today for all of the hard work they do every day in schools. Uh, you're all unsung heroes, so thank you, thank you, thank you from the collective here. And with that, I'll turn it over to Josh, and we'll close the meeting out and adjourn. Yep, thank, uh, thanks everyone again for joining. Um, be on the lookout. We have these partner um, sort of community engagement calls on a quarterly basis, so our next one will probably be sometime in December or early January. Um, thanks again for joining us today, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. All right. Bye, guys.